Okay, what I've got is an 18th century trade musket. It is a footlock. The book describes Paul as having a percussion cap, which means his is based on hitting a little spark chamber. This one's a little bit different. We've got a flint and we've got a piece of steel. When those strike together, you'll see a spark. That would ignite some powder that's been prepared and poured into that little pan. Paul would have measured out his amount of powder. <coughs> Excuse me, get dry throat. And poured it in to the exact size that he needs. And he would have used a little bit to first prime the pan. I don't store my powder in here. Instead, I store my powder in little paper cartridges. No, this would also have been typically done because you can quickly shoot and reload and you don't have to worry about stopping to reload and measure out each time. More than that, every time you fire, you do need some type of wadding, whether it's cloth or paper. So I have the paper ready with this. I'm going to take a little bit of my powder and prime the pan. That's just enough so that you can see what happens when I pull the trigger and I prime the pan. You'll see a little bit of a flash. That flash is meant to then go through the tiny little pinhole into the barrel. If I fire this too much or too often, that sometimes that pinhole can clog and you get what is called a flash in the pan and nothing happens. Other cases are it flashes, then a few seconds later it finally goes off. That's called the hang fire. It's a little bit dangerous because you may be thought, okay, it's not going to go. You put your gun down and then it goes off. And then, of course, in other scenarios, you just don't get a spark and you have to adjust your flint is my biggest problem usually. Okay, so I'll take the rest of my powder now, use some of it to again reprime the pan. I'll lock that in place and, <coughs> excuse me, it's only at half cock so a safety's kind of on. I'm going to pour the rest of the powder down the barrel and if I was going to do a live shot, this is where I would take the musket ball. I don't have any with me, so I guess we'll fire it without one. And I wad it in there nice and tight with either some fabric or paper. And make sure that it's compressed all the way at the bottom of the chamber. If I stop midway or it's only loaded partially, that could cause a misfire or backfire. And you can literally break the barrel or backfire the way you don't want to go through that little pinhole. Not a good scenario. So I'm making sure it's tightly jammed in there. And Paul's described as keeping his musket loaded for whenever he needs it. He doesn't have to go through that routine of getting his percussion cap ready, loading the muzzle and ramming everything down. I could leave it like this for days, months, years, I suppose, if I kept it dry and it's ready to go at a moment's notice. I'll put it at full cock, it's ready to go. I'm gonna walk it out a short distance. And to give you the full picture here, I'll fire it once, and then let's just say I shot a deer, or I don't know, a bear, and I need to get a second shot in before it gets away or before it comes from me, I don't know. <laughs> in order to do that, it, I have to go through the whole routine again. So you really only get one shot. Here's my second shot, I'll bring it with me. If you have sensitive ears or little ones, this would be probably the time to cover them. Do you want me to cover your ears for this? Ooh! <laughs> That's fun. I don't have sense. He's going to do it again. You ready? Ready? He's going to do it again. So if he would have had to get a second shot out because of a bear, look at how long it takes for him to have to do that again. Mom! Uh -oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so what possible scenario? You describe you get the flash of a pan, you get the pain fire. This was a scenario where the flint just came off and there's no way I could get a spark. So pointing it that way, I'm going to typically throw the flint back on. <laughs> I like to think of it as deer's long <laughs> gone. No, that's not that far. Yeah, anyway, I didn't know that.